Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode of the OC Show. This is uh, episode 9. Here's Tim, my name is Peter and first of all the Q&A. Yeah, so like for every show, the Q&A will again be on uh, Sunday evening, 9 p.m. Eastern Time in the US. That's about 6 p.m. Pacific Time and that will be uh, 2, 3 a.m. in Europe and 9 a.m. here in uh, Taipei, so Hong Kong time zone. And we'll be discussing about all the topics of today's show and if you guys have any questions, that's the occasion to, to join us and ask and we'll have also some OCTV t-shirt uh, to give away. Pretty cool. So the big thing for uh, for us coming up in the next couple of weeks is obviously Computex 2015, where, um, where we're focused on our third stop of the HW World Tour. And this time we've we've teamed up with uh, a couple of big partners to throw an extra large stop of uh, of the world tour. The first uh, the first part of the world tour is the ROG OC Showdown area. Yeah, so we already uh, mentioned last time the ROG OC Showdown area, but we didn't really explain what would be possible in that area. And uh, so this week, a few a few days ago, we announced exactly what would be the plan. And um, so basically participants of the event that bought a bench spot are allowed to participate to all of those activities. They can participate to the gathering, to the ROG Showdown area and to the World Series competition. So the ROG Showdown area here, you are able to compete uh, for world records and global first places on 14 selected benchmarks and there is a cash prize for that. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And thanks to, thanks to the, the, the partners who are helping us um, organize this the, the entire world tour event uh, we're also able to for the first time um, to give cash prizes in the world series competition so what we'll do is we take the entire pool of uh, of uh, contributions from the bench spots mm -hmm. double that and that will be the the, pri the, ca the cash prize pool for for the world series as well as a couple of hardware prizes as well yeah so here we're talking about at least two thousand US dollars in i think yeah the the this, uh, the registrations already pushed the the total cash prize purse up over two thousand no? for the uh, rog oc shown an area the total prize pool is uh, is five thousand a little bit above, above five thousand yeah. i think well, that's cool. And actually also one of the convenient things is that the partners of the event such as, uh, so you have Asus, HyperX, Seasonic, they're all providing uh, hardware for those that want to use uh, some of their provided hardware. So there would be some Asus motherboards, there will be some upcoming graphics cards, which we won't mention the name. There will be, of course, some uh, CPUs from Intel that will be, the best bin ones will be reserved for the ROG OC Showdown area, of course. There will be some HyperX memory kits that the part participants can use, as well as power supplies, which I guess for most of the guys is a very interesting thing because it's a lot of kilos left in your carry-on luggage, so more stuff to bring back from Taipei. Uh, if you want to see the, the special memory kits from HyperX, we already uploaded some pictures to our Instagram and Facebook accounts. And yeah. you can see there's this very special tagline where it says it's... it's uh, Especially been by... Especially been by Rambus Yang from, uh, from, uh, from HyperX. Great, that's cool. And uh, so for Computex, there's also some other things that happened. And uh, we mentioned that last time because it was the end of the competitions. But now it's officially announced and three overclockers will be flown into Taipei for the occasion. So there's a bunch of overclockers already traveling on their own means to, to Computex just to be part of the show. But uh, three people uh, are fortunate enough to be flown in by vendors. We have mm -hmm. uh, we have called us from Indonesia who's being flown in as, uh, as the winner of the big XTU challenge. Um, by Gigabyte, and then we have Vivi and Wizard T. You get flown in uh, for uh, for qualifying in the MOA 2015 competition. Oh, okay, so there will be all three benching, I guess, on the respective booth of each of the partners. Or? As far as I know, and this is this is not confirmed. This is not official information. Mm -hmm. Coldest will uh, be benching at the Gigabyte booth in, yep. the, in, in the 101, where they have every year a small area reserved for overclocking stuff. That's cool. And then both Wizard T and Vivi will join MSI on the G-Skill World uh, the oh, over yes. OC stage. So they will stage. represent MSI at that event? Yeah, there. And of course, I think bef the, the week before, they'll do some in-house benching, some pre-testing. Oh, okay, yeah. So no, no stage time on the MSI booth for them, probably not. I don't, I don't know. I, don't I know. guess it all depends on what the hardware will be. And yeah, there's so some interesting stuff to show. We know for sure that X99 is going to be a huge part of the Computex show. And then there's the upcoming graphics card, which is not the GTX 980, but also not the Titan X. Mm -hmm. Maybe something in between there that is 
almost. I have no I've, clue what you're talking about. No, no idea. But <laughs> that might also be tested. And then we have uh, we already saw some leaks of Broadwell and Skylake. So maybe maybe we'll see that behind the scenes. I don't know. Just look at the co- the Computex coverage, and you'll you'll find out. Right. So talking about new stuff, there has been also another new thing at HDI, but what, that was already a few weeks ago, but now I guess with the latest updates, it's really at his full speed, and that's GPU Pi, which uh, completely make a breakthrough in terms of world records in global first places in the month of April. But So that's what's this project about that was developed with uh, overclockers.at? So it's it's actually a pretty interesting interesting benchmark that is developed by um, by Matt from overclockers.at. Mm-hmm. Uh, it started out as a project um, to uh, to commemorate Turrican who passed away September last year and we sort of worked together on an integration with HWBot. So the integration is is near perfect. It's it's ridiculous how good the integration works between GPU Pi and HWL mm-hmm. rankings. And we've added um, four benchmark versions or types of this GPU Pi benchmark. Different so you have, presets you mean? Or yeah, you have, yep. you have two pre- presets for the CPU and then two presets for the GPU. Um, it works on an OpenCL or a CUDA uh, calculations and it looks very similar to SuperPy. So you have loops where you have times on how fast it's, it's, it's calculated and then you have to tweak to get your reduction time proper and you have to you can play around with batches and all that sort of stuff. So it's, it's sort of a new tweakable CPU okay. slash GPU, GPU, GPU benchmark, which is just very well integrated with, with our APIs. Okay, so in terms of integration, is that similar to what we've seen with XTU or is that even beyond? I think it's even better. Yeah. But I, I don't want to say it too loud, but I think it's, it's probably <laughs> well, better. It adds the screenshot feature, which yes. is pretty cool. So you don't have to anymore do your screenshot yourself, whatever you use Paint or whatever snipping do, and then upload it to a but It all does it automatically if you have internet access, of course. Yeah, but you can save it to a data file yeah. and it'll, it'll do exactly the same. Okay, so what's the plan after for this benchmark further, further on? Oh, I've, I've, I've no idea what the, what the next thing is. What would be really cool is, is if we can um, have it communicate with our competition API as well, mm-hmm. like we do with HW Prime. Okay, where yeah. we could use a key visual to indicate, hey, you know what? There's a GPU Pi competition going on. Why don't you participate in that one? So within the application already, you would see the competition and probably be able to select, and select which one you would... Yeah. It to. Well, that would be yeah, interesting, I suppose. You're getting a lot of notifications. <laughs> I don't know if we can hear that. Uh, in terms of uh, competition, some other stuff changed also at HDIBOT, and that's the... Um, well, you remember a few weeks ago, we had to uh, turn off the competition points from the rankings mm-hmm. because there was some little issue. And uh, so now this issue is uh, on the way to be completely fixed uh, by having the points returning, but they are not called competition points anymore. Now it's esports points, and there has been some other changes as well, right? Well, yeah, so the, 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 the problem with the competition points is... Well, actually, we've already discussed that before. Yeah. The guy, the people wanted, wanted wanted it back. So what we've done is we looked at how can we how can we merge these these competition points with the global and the hardware points on HDR mm-hmm. Because as you know, global points and hardware points they are continuous. You can you can lose them at any any time at any point in time. If you set you know a, a score in two thousand and seven and in two thousand sixteen it gets beaten. Then you lose those you points. Lo- you lose oh, you those points. In the ranking. Well, yeah, yeah. The, the points will get lower. Whereas with competitions, when a competition is finished, you can never lose those points. You know, you're always going to be second in that specific competition. And you used so, to keep them forever, right? Yeah, that was so. That was the problem. So the new the new esports points will be taken as the best ten over the past 365 days. Okay, the past year. So from yeah. today to the previous day in the yeah. last year. For example, if, I don't know when this video is going to launch, but if, to, let's say today is May 15, 20, 2015, then all the competitions that closed in between May 15, 2014 till to today. today, those account for, and they, those are accountable for the, the top 10. Okay, so those are the points you have on HDIBOT, right? It doesn't affect your ranking in the season on OC Sports. No, those are just the HDIBOT yeah. overclocker leagues. Okay, so what about the world record points? So the world record points are a second issue that was brought up by the community who, um, who, who were pointing out that some benchmarks were getting a ridiculous amount of points for a seemingly easy score. I want to say it's not easy to get the world record in, in any of the legacy benchmarks, but it seems fairly easy because those scores have only one GPU and uh, so- sometimes the GPU is not even highly overclocked. In some cases, even just running stock cooling. So the problem is that 
when we introduced revision four, the points were broken down into the different global categories, ranging from single GPU to four GPUs, and then from mm -hmm. single core CPUs to as many cores you can have in a CPU. The, the problem is that the, in the four-way GPU categories, there is not that much competition. And as the points are based on how many participants there are in, in a ranking, the four-way scores, which would be breaking the world records, would get a very low amount of points. In some, mm -hmm. case, in, in some cases, as low as 20 points, for example. Because they're not popular. Exactly. In, well, the, in, in yeah. the single GPU categories where there's a lot of competition, the, the number one score would get maybe about 150 points or even 160 mm. points. So there was this difference between, okay, with one GPU, you get 150 points, and then a world record with four GPUs would get 20 points. So we introduced a patch for that, where we mm -hmm. said, okay, you know what, if you have the world record in one of these categories, you get a bonus point of, you get a, you get a bonus of 100 points. Which you hold until someone else breaks the record. Yeah, exactly. It's just a, a, a patch for a specific position yeah. in an undervalued category. As time goes on, obviously, benchmarks become a bit more CPU, uh, CPU biased. So we noticed that in the legacy benchmarks, such as Aquamark, 3 Marco 1, 3 Marco 5, and 3 Marco 6, those world records were actually set with single GPU um, configurations. Okay, so graphics cards such as Titan X, for instance, or something like that. Yeah, single GPU ones. And the yeah. single GPU categories already have a lot of points because there's a lot of participation. So with that patch still applied to those benchmarks, you would see that the world record for Aquamark would, for example, get 225 points, whereas the world record for a four-way Titan X on LN2 in Firestrike Extreme would only get uh, 150 points. So there was a sort of an imbalance there mm -hmm. where, the, where the community pointed out, like, you know, there's maybe too much points in this one category. And they make, they make a very good point. It doesn't, make, it doesn't uh, make sense to apply a patch in a category where mm -hmm. the weighing is already done correctly. So in those four legacy benchmark categories, we'll remove the world record points, ensuring that, you know, all the, all the scores in Aquamark are still valued according to all the other benchmarks yeah. on HRA bot. Okay, well, that's that's good. I guess that's going to be a good solution for the moment, and we'll see how that applies. So, when is that coming into um, into uh, the current rankings? All the all the changes to the points and to the esports points will be coming in uh, in the in the next couple of weeks. We need to update the pages with the explanations, and we need to make sure the back end is yep. you know all all we push all the all the changes to our production engine. And so how much is that going to affect the current rankings we're seeing? Is there going to be a lot of changes? or in, in respect to the competition points, it might change a little bit. We had a, a test version running mm -hmm. on UAT and we could see in, in some cases people jumped up quite a lot of places, usually the people that were very active in competitions. The top 20 did not change that much. We saw yeah. someone, I think Splave jumped up five, point, uh, five places, sorry, maybe, but in general, it's not like someone jumped from 100 to top 20 or something okay. like that. For for the rookies, it will actually be quite beneficial because the people that are the rookies that compete in the rookie rumbles will get 50 points for winning one of those rookie rumbles, which make them you know jump up in total points total yeah. quite 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 quickly. It's a good encouragement when you start, I guess, to see that you can actually climb the ladder pretty quick at least at the start. Yeah, and then the rookie rumble is, is scoped to the to the rookies only anyway. Yeah. Uh, as far as the world record points you know the the world record point patch only affects the top 10 of every benchmark and since we have only four benchmarks where we remove the, the that patch doesn't it's, affect that much it's 40 scores that get affected oh, yeah, so not a big not that much of a big deal i guess it's not a not a huge effect yeah. on the rankings that's for sure okay so i think that's about it for today's show uh, just a quick reminder guys, there are still some com competitions running on the OC Esports, so if you guys are interested, for instance, in participating in the ASUS ROG OC Showdown Extreme Series uh, Round 2, that one is going until uh, May 18th, so there's just a few days left. I guess that's going to be a happy benching weekend for the ones that are a bit late. Uh, there's the Gigabyte X99 Champion Challenge that is going on until the end of the month. And of course, there's a Rookie Rumble that started last weekend, as well as the Novice Nimble that are still running them for as well until the end of May. And for those guys, those of you that are interested in more older hardware, there's also the Old School is Best School series, which is running for its second round. So until next time, guys, keep pushing it. Have a good weekend and um, see you at the Q&A, 9 p.m. Eastern Time.